Philip Kahn Gotanda is one of American theater's most prolific and influential playwrights. Over the last 30 years, his plays have offered a look into the Asian American experience, with issues dealing with cultural identity, family dynamics, and race relations. He's been called a pioneer in his field. When he started writing plays in the 1970s, there were few Asian American playwrights. I think what's sort of hard for younger people to understand was that at that time, to be able to write a story with a Japanese American or Asian American as a protagonist, or about a Japanese or Asian American family, um, was not the norm. And I was still getting these kinds of things from my agent, for example, who would say, you know, why don't you write a regular story? So what are you saying that it's not often as an Asian actor that we get to portray on such a large stage our own stories? You know, I mean, even if I do get a lead role uh, in a film or in a play, you know, it's often uh, I'm being cast colorblind. He owns the mortgage. People respect Comma, him. Comma, people respect him. Thanks to Philip, uh, he's kept me on board for 20 some odd years and has helped me um, <clears throat> um, improve my craft. It creates a community. You need the plays in order to nurture the actors, right? And so, in that sense, um, Philip's plays are a huge resource and treasure for, especially for the Japanese American community. Philip's latest work is a new play called After the War, commissioned by San Francisco's American Conservatory Theater. For three years, he's been researching and workshopping the play along with artistic director Carrie Perloff. He's had such a long and distinguished history, and I think one of the things that's most important is that he stayed in the field and grown up in the theater. So his work has really matured and deepened in our field. I'll set some beers up for you and Mr. Worthy. Call him Earl. He won't throw a fit. Show what? Show you. Bug juice. I'm just joshing you myself more. <laughs> Show you. Show you. This play is a big departure because it's so... Uh, culturally diverse. And that's why having Stephen Anthony Jones as part of the collaboration was so valuable to have a black actor whom Philip really was close to say to him, I'll work with you on the character of Earl so it will feel authentic. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so that's good, Philip. Yeah. Yeah. Are we good? We're good. Okay. It's just wonderful, uh, I think, to be able to have an opportunity to participate in that process and to create a new work uh, in the American theater. I'm interested in um, the relationships Asian Americans have with the rest of the world. After the war takes place in San Francisco's Japantown, 1948. And what's interesting about that time period is that uh, Japanese Americans had been interned during the war. And while they were gone, in this vacuum, the African American population moved in. And then Japanese Americans get out of the camps, move back to Japantown, and of course want their neighborhood back. And so what I write about is that period when they're kind of uh, rubbing up against each other and trying to figure out whose community is it. Let the wounds heal. Huh? Uh, what, uh, it's taken you five years to come around and say that to my face? The story revolves around Chet Mankawa, a second generation Japanese American, or Nisei. His personal history is filled with injustice and controversy. You folks come back. Chet is a, a Nisei man who has been a, a no-no boy. And what a no-no boy is, and it's um, during the camps, the government came in and asked everyone to sign a questionnaire, one saying that I am loyal to the US government and that I'm willing to serve in the armed forces. Um, and there were some people who felt that uh, they didn't want to answer it. They were American citizens already. Why did they have to sign any paper? They dumped me in Thule Lake. What the hell was I supposed to do? I come back here and everyone treats me like the enemy. And so when these uh, no-no boys came back, they were ostracized. And so Chet is faced with this dilemma of being both an outsider in his own uh, community as well as the country. And here you folks come back refusing to fight, uh, thumbing your nose at the government. 